Hi, my name's Sheila and I have a homestead in the BC interior. And today I wanna to show you how I'm going to ferment garlic and honey. Um, I like to ferment as many things as I can. I'm learning, so this is new. Um, I mean, of course I've done sauerkraut every year for, I don't know, the past seven years. But um, I like to try my hand um, at uh, all the different ferments because I like to have something fermented with every meal. This is super easy, so you can expect the shortest video ever. Um, this garlic isn't garlic that I grew, I usually do, but um, I got this garlic from across the river. They grew a ridiculous amount of garlic, and so I got my hands on this beautiful garlic. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel it, and I'm gonna get it in this jar. Um, and so to do that, actually, I'm gonna use a knife first. I find, I mean, this isn't a new trick a lot of people know this, but if you give the garlic just a little crack, it pops out nicely. So, I'm not washing it or doing anything. I'm not even cutting off the ends, although you can. I might, I might just cut off the little ends, but I'm not gonna cut it up. And then I'm just gonna put it in there. Now, this isn't even a ton of garlic. Um, I just wanted to do a small amount and a little bit of honey so that, um, I could try it out. I was mentioning to my husband, I'm like, oh yeah, what do you think about fermented garlic? He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, fermented garlic and honey in them. And he's like, well, what are we gonna do with it? And I was thinking, well, I mean, you can put it on meat when you cook it, you could braise with it, things like that. But I was thinking like salad dressing, it would be really good um, because I basically, well, we make all of our salad dressing from scratch and it usually has honey and garlic in, to, in it. So I thought that would be a really great way of getting something fermented into our diet and like exploring different flavors. This one has a little bad spot. It looks like, um, you know, sometimes quack grass will go right through like a potato or something. It kind of looks like that, but I'll just cut it off. And make sure that it's all clean. When you're fermenting things, you don't want anything bad because um, you want to use like the best fruit and that kind of thing. But the exception of cider, when you make cider, you do not need to use your best apples. Some people will pick up the bad apples, but if you go back and you look at how they used to make cider, they would let the apples, like first they'd use the windfall, but then they would also let the apples like rot on the ground before they went and made them. So, um, you know, it's all, in our perception, people are really scared of fermented food, um, but if done properly, it's quite safe. Um, it does have to do with the pH. In this, I'm not adding salt. Um, some people add a splash of apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna see how it looks. I also have five gallons of apple cider vinegar in my basement, which I made when we made um, apple cider. If you are interested in my apple cider, I think it's like a three minute video. It might be on Instagram, but it might be on YouTube. Uh, maybe. Anyway, and it just shows how we press our apples. My husband, uh, not technically my husband, I just call him that, but uh, he made a really awesome press with local wood. Um, and uh, so it was really neat. Wow, this is like barely any garlic. I might have to get more garlic in order to continue this process because, I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> I wanted to do like a half a jar. I wanted to be like something going through this process. My little, my little geese. Oh yeah, that was, it really does help just get them loosened up. My honey was also, um, it's unpasteurized. You wanna have unpasteurized raw honey, but it was also, um, you know how it gets creamy? So I'm just heating it up on low, super, super low almost like non-existent just to get it melted enough to pour it over. It just has to like cover it. And what's gonna happen is that as the days progress, it's actually, um, the garlic is gonna release liquids and that will make it runny. So that's kind of cool. If anybody has any suggestions for how to use fermented garlic, I'm totally open to it. So I'm gonna get more garlic and I'm gonna fill this jar um, so that we'll have like a 
decent amount to try. But man, this garlic, funny story. I can't remember when we were cooking, it was something, some kind of roast or something, anyway, or fried steak, and my husband had put like a clove of garlic in, like just a full solid clove inside, on the side and had like fried it. Um, and later I was cleaning up the kitchen and I saw this like, this fried chunk of garlic and I was like, oh my God, that just looks so good. So I bit it and I was like, oh, that's spicy. And I just like ate it. I think I ate three quarters of it. It is so spicy. Like my eyes were watering, my nose was watering and I'm like, I was almost sick. It was just like that potent and I love spicy food, but like a little bit too raw for my taste. Anyway, I'll flash back with uh, what we need to finish this up. Okay, I switched to a smaller jar. I was gonna do more, but to be honest, my baby is actually sleeping in the room where we store all of our garlic because it's one of the coolest rooms in the house. <laughs> and I just don't wanna wake him up. Not that I would, but I, I just wanna get this video done and my garlic fermented because later when he wakes up, life begins. Okay. So I'm just gonna pour on the honey. Should I do it like the camera way? So you can actually see? Not that you can probably see. So it just, I probably don't even need that much. I'll save the rest for a latte. Now, the garlic did float, but what you do is you put a lid on it and you're gonna stir it every day or like toss the jar up and down every day. Um, and that's it. I'm gonna sit it, have it sit on the counter and yeah, and I'll consume it. And how many days? I think a week. I'll write on the bottom how many days, and then that's it. And one more fermented thing to add to the roster. It's not like a competition, it's just like I actually want at least one fermented thing with every single meal breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, I mean, we've got a few things going on. This is a crock of delicious, what I call my winter sauerkraut. It is cabbage, carrot, onion, garlic, and then the 3% brine. And I can't open it for a few more days. I put the date on the lid and oh my God, it just smells so good. It is like so, so good smelling. Anyway, so like with that and this, and then I'm drinking my kefir water. We just constantly want to be feeding our bodies, um, there is a microbiome. I was going to say bag of bacteria because <laughs> my friends joke that our bodies are just bags of bacteria. <laughs> you got to feed that microbiome, everybody. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, if you like this video, make sure that you give it the thumbs up. And if you want to see more food, this is not a cooking channel. And um, I'm actually just showing you what I'm doing. You need to look up a proper recipe of what you want to do because I am not a chef um, at all. Hopefully you watched to the end of the video. So you caught that. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I'm going to be growing, um, hopefully all of the food that we need for our family for the year, with the exception of some staples like wheat and coffee and tea. But, uh, yeah, if you want to follow along, make sure you subscribe and, uh, that's it. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.